Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So today we're going to be looking at how to set up the remote Lua loader to run the UMTX kernel exploit on firmware 6.0 up to 7.61. This is essentially a new way that we can run the UMTX kernel exploit on those firmwares. Up until now, we've had to use the Blu-ray drive version of the exploit, but now we actually have this new version that will allow us to load the exploit from a save file by loading up a game and it will trigger the save file and then you can send the exploit over the network which is a lot faster and more reliable than even the Blu-ray drive version of the exploit that we've had access to so far. This will also work on older firmwares too, but obviously we have easier ways to run the jailbreak on those firmwares. So the benefit of this method is that once you have it set up, it's extremely reliable. I haven't had a single kernel panic so far running it. And secondly, it's also extremely fast. Once you have it set up, you can get up and running with, you know, the elf loader and get the debug settings enabled super, super fast. Only takes a few seconds once you have it set up. And it's also a little bit more powerful than the Blu-ray drive exploit right now, because it can run John Tornblum's Elf Loader, which can allow us to run other payloads like the shell server FTP. So we can remote access the file system and we can also enable the web server payload to access John Tornblum's homebrew launcher to load some homebrew. So a lot of stuff that you can do with this already. Now the downside is in order to get this set up, you do need to get your hands on one of these specific games. So these are Japanese weeb games that are only available in Japan, unfortunately. So you need to get your hands on a copy of one of these games. In my case, I was able to get a copy of Hamadashi Creative, which can be used to load the exploit. So any one of these games will do. And the other problem is getting the modified save file on your PS5 that can be used to load this exploit. So in order to do that, the universal way is to restore a backup file that has all of the modified save files on it. And you can just restore that backup onto your PS5 and you'll have access to those save files. That would be the way to do it. So Master S9 has a backup here, which includes the save files for all of the games, apart from Hamadashi Creative. It has the Hamadashi Creative demo and all of the other ones, but not Hamadashi Creative itself. Uh, I've also made my own backup file that has all of the games uh, apart from Hamadashi Creative Demo. So if you have Hamadashi Creative, you wanna, you'll want you'll want to restore my backup. And if you have Hamadashi Creative Demo, you can restore his backup. And if you have any of the other games, you can restore either one. It doesn't really matter. So that is the situation there. Now, restoring somebody else's backup onto your PS5 will reset your console. So you're going to want to back up your own files first. Now, there are other ways that you can also get the save files on without restoring a backup. There's a few other methods but those require your PS5 to have connected to a PSN account at some point in the past so that it is activated with an account ID. And if that is the case with your PS5, then you can use a couple of other ways to get the save file on there without resetting your console. So one method is to use the uh, Save Wizard application, which is a $60 application, and download the Lua Loader save files, which contain the modified save files for all of the games. And then you can just use the Save Wizard application by plugging in a USB drive into uh, your computer. And then you can essentially use this by heading over to the Resign section and clicking on Import, selecting the Lua Loader here and clicking Open, and then selecting your title ID for your game. So Hamadashi Creative is 27389. And then I can just select the save file and import it and apply to my profile. And then Save Wizard will resign the save file to my account ID. And once that's done, I can just plug that USB drive into my PS5 and use the option on the PS5 to copy the save file from the USB to the internal storage. And that will get my save file on my PS5 without having to restore a backup. The other way to do it is that if you have a jailbroken PS4, you can use the Apollo save tool to do the same thing, to re-sign the save files and then copy them with a USB to your PS5. So that is the other option, but that will only work if your PS5 has been activated with a PSN account in the past. If not, you'll have to restore the backup file. So if you're going to restore the backup file, you're going to want to backup your own console first so you don't lose all of your save data, for instance. So what you're going to do is plug in a USB drive that has enough storage space on there into the back of your PS5 and then head to the settings and head down to system. Go to system software and backup and restore and make sure you backup your PS5. Just click yes and then just select what you want to backup. I would recommend obviously backing up uh, save data. You can also back up screenshots and video clips. And as for applications, uh, you can go in there. If you want to back up any specific applications, then you can just select the ones that you want to back up. If you have any, you know, digital games that you had downloaded, 
you probably want to back those up as well. In my case, I don't have any games and apps that I want to back up. So I'll just do save data and screenshots and then we can go ahead and just let it do the backup. Okay, so backup is now complete. We'll restart our PS5. And on the computer, we can see we have our backup file created here. So we can just go ahead and back this up somewhere on our computer. 7.61 backup. And copy this out onto our computer and keep it safe somewhere on your computer so that you can always restore it to get your save files back uh, if you ever need to uh, or any of your digital games that you had. So with that, we can delete the backup from the USB drive now and then restore the backup that has the Lua exploit on it. So in my case, I'm going to use my own Lua save backup here. So I'm just going to copy the PS5 folder to the root of my USB drive. Make sure your USB drive, of course, is formatted in XFAT. Okay, and once again, we can eject our USB and plug it in to our PS5 once more. Then we're just going to restore that backup again by heading back to our settings, system, system software, backup and restore. And this time we're going to restore our PS5 and we're going to select the backup and click restore. And are you sure? Yes, we're going to restore. Okay, so after restoring the backup, if we head over to settings, go to our storage settings, console, save data, PS4 games, and you'll see that all of the modified save files are on here. So you can see we've got all of the games. So this one, Raspberry Cube, and then this one should be Hamadashi Creative. So there we go, we've got them all on there. So the next step, of course, is going to be to put in our game. Okay, game is ready to play, so let's give it a try here and see if it loads our Lua loader. And yep, there we go. As you can see, remote Lua loader is now listening on port 9026. Now, discrepancy here. You can see I'm on 4.03. I decided to restore the backup on my 4.03 system because I have a bunch of stuff on my 7.61 system and it would take too long to back it all up. So let me switch over to my 7.61 system here and uh, run it on that instead. Okay, so switched over to my 7.61 console here. First of all, we want to note down our console's IP address on the network. So I've got 192.168.137.54. So take a note of your IP address and then we can run the game. And that should run our Lua exploit on firmware 7.61 here. So to make loading the payloads easier, we're going to use this handy program from Master S9, which just simplifies the process. So we can download that as a zip file and extract it to our uh, computer. If there are any updates to the payloads, you can get them from the original repo. Just head into the payloads folder here and you can download the latest Lua files here. And then all you have to do is put them on the program inside the PS5 folder and then payload 05 folder, and you can replace the payloads here with whatever the latest updated ones are, if you need to do that. Um, at the time of recording, it already has the latest payloads included, I believe. So we can run the program here. Uh, we'll do more info, run anyway. You do need to have Python installed. If you go to Tools Python, it will take you to the website here. Make sure you download and install Python so that it can work. And we're gonna select PS5, of course, here, Lua New, and CMD True. Then we're just going to enter our PS5's IP address here, which was uh, 137.54. And we should be all good. So the first thing we're going to do is run the UMTX exploit here. So we're going to click that and that will actually run the jailbreak on the console. And look how fast this is. Honestly, this is ridiculous. Done. It's finished. It's successfully jailbroke the console or ran the kernel exploit. So that is now done. And then all you have to do is send the elf loader in order to be able to send additional payloads. So we just click elf loader and there it is spawning the elf loader. And if we switch back over to our PS5, you'll see that after a few seconds it is now running the elf loader, serving elf loader on the IP address on port 9021, which means we can now send additional payloads. With that loaded, we can actually just exit out of the game now because we have the elf loader running in the background. So we can just close out of the game. We can eject the disk. We don't need that anymore. If we go into settings, you can see we've got the debug settings working. So we've got debug settings enabled. And we can also send payloads like the FTP payload over to our console. If I switch back over here and run Netcat GUI, I can take the FTP payload and throw this in. You can download payloads to execute here from John Tornblum's PS5 payload dev repo. There's a bunch of different payloads you can run here. The shell server, Klog server, as well as the FTP server here. So we can go ahead and download the FTP payload here, which I already have right here. So I've gone ahead and copied it 
into Netcat GUI and we can send the payload to the console on port 9021 with the PS5's IP. So all I'm going to do is send that payload and if I switch over here you can see it's executing on the console and that will allow us to get remote access to the file system with FTP. So we can open up an FTP client like FileZilla here, enter the IP of the PS5 in the host box, port number is 2121 and then we can simply quick connect to access the file system and there we go, we have root access to the file system on 7.61 here. So from there, I can go into the data folder. I'll create a homebrew folder in here. Homebrew. And then I will add any homebrew applications in here from John Tornblum's web server repo here. We can download the homebrew loader package file and any applications we want to try and run on the console. So for example, let's... Uh, Maybe we can try uh, RetroArch. And we'll also try uh, Devolution X, which is for basically running Diablo on our PS5. So we'll give that a try, a couple of uh, homebrew games. So we've got Devolution X and RetroArch, just a couple of like homebrew applications to test here, some homebrew games. So we'll go ahead and uh, create a folder and extract the contents here of this homebrew application into that folder. So I'll create a RetroArch folder here on the desktop and extract the contents in here. So I'll go ahead and copy those through FTP to get those on the system. Finally, we can copy the package file for the homebrew launcher to the root of our USB drive and plug that into the PS5. And finally, back on the PS5 here, I'll go into settings. We'll go to our debug settings, game, package installer, and we'll go ahead and install that package file that we put on our USB to get that installed. Of course, I'll also need to inject the web server payload as well. So I download the payload.zip file here from this web server repo and extract it out to my desktop and copy that in and inject that using the elf loader on 9021. So we'll hit inject and that should run. There it is, HTTP. So now hopefully the homebrew launcher should run. Um, there we go. And yep, the homebrew launcher is working. Take a look at that. Let's try and run Devolution X, which is a, which is a Diablo build here. And as you can see, we have Diablo running on our 7.61 PS5. So this gives you an idea of what's currently possible with this current setup. You can use the homebrew launcher to run these homebrew games, things like RetroArch. There's also uh, things like the offline account activator, the remote play enabler. So those are some of the homebrew things that can run right now on 7.61. Of course, we're still waiting for kernel stuff to be ported to firmware 6.0 to 7.61 before this will really take off. So I can understand if you might want to wait uh, and not restore a backup or anything on your console until K stuff comes out, because that's when uh, things will take off for the ability to run PS4 fake packages and PS5 game backups, which we currently cannot run on these firmwares yet until we get that payload ported over. Uh, which may still take a while, we'll have to wait and see. But this gives you an idea of what's currently possible. You've got debug settings, you've got the homebrew launcher, you can run homebrew games, you can run the offline account activator theoretically and the, the remote play enabler. There's also the self-decryptor that you can run, uh, which can allow you to decrypt your game executables, although there are some problems with that on uh, 7.61 at the moment, so still looking into that. But uh, yeah, still quite a few things that are available already. And this is more than what you can currently do with the Blu-ray drive version of the exploit that we've had on 6.0 to 7.61 so far. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.